everybody, it's Romania Black, and we are on Death Parade, episode six. Ooh, it's a stormy day outside, and that's okay, because we have Death Parade to watch, right? So, with this episode, we are at the halfway point point of the series if you can believe that we were all, we were talking about this on discord the other day and truck was like man yeah we're halfway through the series how did that happen and i'm like yeah it just it just happened out of nowhere it feels so weird to be like nearly halfway through the series now next week we are going to watch the ova death billiards i did a poll on patreon even before i started this series and asked when i should watch that ova and the majority said in between episodes six and seven, because that's when like a watch guide, I'd looked up a watch guide to see like when to watch it. And they're like, well, you could watch it before the series starts or you could watch it between episodes six and seven. And I was like, I kind of want to watch it in between episodes six and seven. So that's what we're going to be doing next week is watching Death Billiards. So, and see what all that is about. But I'm, I'm really excited to see what this episode has in store. Uh, we just met Ginty, who is like the redheaded guy. That like, He's very serious. He's just very serious about his job. And he doesn't like the way Deckham's doing things. And Deckham's like, I've been doing this for five years. <laughs> so not too long, right? Which begs a lot of questions. We talked about this in the last reaction. Like, where do the Arbiters come from? Like, did Deckham just spring out of nowhere? Is he like, are they like angels that are just created? Uh, Oculus, who is the guy that seems to be like over all of the managers and all the other Arbiters, seems to think that God doesn't exist there anymore. So who created Deckham? Was he a human that was promoted? Ginty kind of makes it seem like they're not human at all. So how does that work? And then you have Castra, who I love her design. Her design and her whole layer is just so cool. And then you have uh, Nona um, basically just trying to trying to deal with being 82 years old and being in charge of management. <laughs> so yeah, there's a lot of interesting things at work. There was a lot of world building in the last set of episodes, but Ginty does not like the way that Deckham does things, and he especially doesn't like the relationship that, Ginty, that Deckham has with the black-haired girl, who we found out is a human. She has died. She's just stuck there in limbo because she can't... She remembered her own death, and they can't pass judgment on her because she couldn't play the game. So... Lots of interesting things happening, but the only thing I wanted to make note was that I was told through Patreon that there is an English dub for this series and that it's pretty fun. Um, I have not watched the English dub yet, but I feel like since it's been recommended, I may have to go back and kind of check it out and see and see what all that is about, right? I'm very curious about it. So I usually um, do one of two things. I either watch the dub in between episodes or I will wait until I'm done with the series and then go back and rewatch it in the dub and do like a binge. So I don't usually get the opportunity to binge shows anymore since I have my channel. So I like taking the opportunity to, to binge when I'm done watching. So I might do that with Death Parade since I've not since I've not been keeping up in between episodes. I may wait and once I'm done, just do a whole big binge of the dub because it's only 12 episodes. And then when we do the live stream about Death Parade, I can talk about the dub in it. So. That seems like a good plan, right? But I'm excited, y'all, to see what all goes down in this episode. I hope you all are too. But I want to give a quick shout out over on Patreon to our philanthropy tier. I have three tiers on Patreon. Um, one is a dollar that allows you to talk in the Discord about these shows as well as vote in the polls. We have a lot of polls coming up the next several months, so uh, you get to vote in those. And then for $5, you can see episodes uh, a week ahead of time on YouTube, which includes episodes like this and the one after it. And then the final tier is the philanthropy tier. And these are just people who are amazing. They just want to help support me to keep me doing what I'm doing, um, to keep buying the streaming services I do, the host sites, the software, to keep up to date with everything, and then buying the anime and manga that I review on this channel. So you all are so important because you help keep me doing what I do and being able to afford it. So I greatly appreciate it, y'all. I don't deserve your support, but I'm highly grateful and humbled by it. So to Edgar, to Nameless Monster, to Dana, to Anime Annie, to Tyrone Tyrone, to Kenny, to Arjo, to Shimoyama, to Be Happy, to Translucent Men, to Eric, to Sunspots, and to Alex Cornejo, Thank you all so much. You all are amazing, and I am so grateful for your support. All of my love. So yeah, uh, we're going to just dive in, see what this episode entails, and, uh, and just see what we get, shall we? 
So make sure I got the right ear on this because these have a hard enough time staying in my ear to begin with. So we're going to start <laughs> uh, episode six of Death Parade. We're at the halfway point, y'all, and we'll just see what we get. And we're going to do that here in three, two, one, and let's, uh, let's do this. So this episode, <laughs> oh, Ginty, Ginty is a different, different character than our, our boy Deckham. Quite different, right? In a lot of sense of the word. And I, I don't know how to feel because <laughs> on the one hand, uh, on the one hand, I feel like Ginty is much more entertaining to watch than Deckham. It's a different kind of entertaining. I don't want to say that entirely. De Deckham is very subtle and his ex micro expressions and things are very interesting to watch. I enjoy watching Deckham's like, it seems like you get to see Deckham processing things a lot more than Ginty. And so I like seeing Deckham try to process what's going on. And he has a lot more like subtle, like, like, oh, like surprise. His expressions are very genuine, whereas Ginty is very guarded. So when you watch Deckham, you're experiencing his actual reactions to things. And that part is entertaining. Ginty is very guarded and like does not wear, he like keeps things close to the vest, it seems. And so his expressions are a lot more like, mm, like they're, they're less telling, right? less telling. So I don't know. I They're both entertaining in their own ways. I feel like Ginty is a refreshing arbiter to watch because he's a lot more menacing than Deckham is. Deckham, but it's it's different too because Deckham can be menacing too in that he's very cold. Deckham is very cold and trying to figure things out and whereas Ginty is just like fiery, where he's just like, uh, which it kind of, it makes a lot of sense when you look at their two locations. Like Deckham's, Deckham's bar is very like cold, like cool colors, like purples and blues. And it has like this cold neon feel to it. There's like the neon glow. It has just like a very cold kind of tranquil feel to it. And, and the aesthetic of Deckham's bar is like all over the place. Like you go from like the bamboo shoots to like a jukebox to like mosaic glass, like like nothing matches. Everything is just like a hodgepodge of things slown, thrown together. It feels like an AI made the bar and didn't know exactly what to do. So it was just like, oh, we'll just borrow from all these bars and put it all together. Whereas Ginty's has a very specific outlined aesthetic. He has the dolls, it's all warm colors. There's like the sand, the reds and oranges and yellows all look really good. I, I feel like it's very, very interesting. So I, it just, it, I like the aesthetic of Ginty's bar more and Ginty is a big breath of fresh air in this series of how an arbiter does things. Ginty doesn't, like Deckham treats it very like serious. Deckham's like, here's the game and all this. And it's, it's almost like a secret club that you walk into. Whereas Ginty's just like, let's get this over with. Like he just isn't, Ginty already seems bored with the process of the games, right? which is fascinating. So I don't know how long Ginty has been an Arbiter. I don't want to know. I'm assuming maybe we'll find out by the end. Assuming that he's been an Arbiter for longer than Deckham. So maybe he's kind of like Nona and he's like just getting a little bit bored with it. And he's like, oh, let's just get this over with. Although Twister as a death game, didn't see that coming. I did not see that coming, but also what? <laughs> Twister is a very scary game anyway because it puts you in all sorts of situations um, and it's a hard game. You have to be pretty like nimble for it. Uh, but the adding the effect of like the heat and then the whole floor dropping out. Nah, mm -mm, that's really hard. That's crazy. I would have just fell off instantly. I would not have been able to keep my balance at all. But what's curious is that this is a, a very interesting relationship that forms in this episode between the fangirl and the idol. And I almost think that both of them end up getting reincarnated. They either both get reincarnated or I feel like they're both going to go to hell. <laughs> One of the two. Because honestly, there's not a lot of darkness in their hearts that's really brought out, right? Ginty has like, I love the Ginty's bar. He has like the beautiful, like the overhead lights. It's really pretty. And she's like, oh. And at first they both seem one way and then you find out a little bit more about them as the story goes but what's interesting is that 
for her, for Mayu, Mayu starts out kind of being a little bit, like, aggravated and irritated about the whole situation. And she seems like just this, like, bratty girl. But then the more you get to know her, you're like, no, she's actually just, like, a fangirl who's like anybody else. And she just loved Harada, the idol guy. And then she fell by slipping on a bar of soap and cracking her head. That's the most ridiculous way to go out. But, like, there wasn't any darkness to her. She was just, like, a fangirl that wanted to see him. And I wondered if the episode was going to make her, like, have this, like, stalker tendencies. But she really didn't. She wrote him fan letters and she had all this stuff. But that's not any different than any other fan of a celebrity. So she really had nothing malicious about her. And there's really no darkness to her. And she even like volunteered to die for him. So I can't see her not getting reincarnated. I feel like that's going to happen. And then for him, he, you know, took advantage of his celebrity status and didn't treat his fans the best. And the worst case scenario was that he broke up with a girl and was kind of heartless to her and she ended up committing suicide. But that, but he, he was remorseful afterwards. Like it showed him being remorseful that she died and being sad and then he slept with the one woman who turns out to be the sister, Lisa, and Lisa ends up killing him. I mean, like, she, if she had blown up in that, she probably would have been, like, in the void. But no. So, and by the end, he kind of realizes that and tries to save her, try to save Mayu. Like, there was a moment where he was going to, like, kick her off the, the twister board. And at that point, I was, you could see in Ginty's eyes, he's like, oh, you're doing something bad. You're going to go to the void because of this. But then at the last minute, he changes his mind and says, I don't want someone to die because of me like Kana did. So he tries to save her and it doesn't work. And he's sad about it. And that's when he remembers everything that's happened. So both of these characters, kind of like in episode three, both of them end up being good people. And so they should, by all accounts, get reincarnated. And the fact that they do a concert at the end <laughs> in front of Ginty and the others suggests that, like, if they were going to the void, would you really let them do, like, a celebrity little mini concert and then let them go? I don't think you would. So I feel like in that sense, I feel like in that sense that I, I don't know. I feel like with that being the case that they both are going to get reincarnated and neither of them are going to go to the void. But we don't find out! We don't find out. In fact, what's funny is that they both kind of, they died at the same time because that's why they're there. But she ends up taking longer to get down to him, which is, again, expanding on the lore just a bit. Like, because we've we've seen so far them all arriving at the exact same time because they've died at the same time. But here, he gets there before her. But there's clearly, clearly Ginty got two sets of memories. So he knew that there was going to be two people coming. But that's interesting that they arrive at different times. I find that rather interesting. The Kokeshi dolls that he has are also interesting. I like that there's not really an explanation for them. They're just part of his aesthetic and part of him as an arbiter. Why he has these dolls, these spiritual dolls, I don't know. I'm assuming someone in the comments will talk about Kokeshi dolls and I'll, I'll bring it up in a future <laughs> episode discussion. But um, again, I like Ginty's bar and I like the aesthetic of it. The giant hand sculpture that's in the corner is rather interesting. And Ginty, I, I didn't realize that. I guess is that Hosoya voicing Ginty? Maybe? I don't want to look it up because I don't want to see, like, any other characters for the series revealed yet. But I guess that could be Ginty. He could be Hosoya. Miyano Mamoru is the one that Harada sounded like. Now, whether or not that's the case, I don't know. But Ginty just seems annoyed by humans. He doesn't like humans. I, I assume that he doesn't like humans because he's dealt with these games so many times now that he probably has a jaded perception of them. That they're not good. They have all this darkness within them. They're really bad people. And then maybe maybe he's just had a lot of bad batches of people in the games. And, he, and that's kind of jaded his perception of humanity. But it's interesting because he just looks bored and doesn't... Ginty is very emotional, I'm convinced. He's a very emotional person. But he tries not to show it and fails <laughs> miserably. Whereas Deckham... Deckham is an emotional person, but he's very good at hiding it. I feel like Deckham has emotions within him, but he's very good at masking them. And you just see this, like, you know, resting bitch face on the outside, but there's all this emotion buried inward. I feel like that is the case. Whereas with Ginty, he has all this emotion and bubbling energy, but he's not very good at masking it. So it just comes across as him being trying to be grumpy and, and sundere about it. 
But yeah. And so then she sees Harada, Mayu does, and reveals that she's a huge fan of him. And he's like the very stereotypical, stereotypical idol. And he's, she's like so happy that they brought him together. And he's like, oh, we've got a loud one here. It's like, oh, come on. And so they have the same game board, just like the other floors, except this one's red, fitting the aesthetic. I, now I'm like, why is Deckham's green? Because his bar is like blues and purples. <laughs> I'm like, what? what is this aesthetic? And they end up playing Twister. I like that they can't legally say Twister because it's a copyrighted game. They can't legally say it. So she's like, Twist. And you're like, oh, I know what, what this is. But because of copyright, we can't exactly say it. So Cross Heart Attack. Cross Heart Attack is the name of the song that is for the band fitting enough and then um but it's also like crossing arms and legs over when they said cross heart attack i honestly thought that it was going to be like the first episode where if you landed on a certain color it was going to affect a certain body part luckily it does not do that because that could get really dangerous really quick but we have the little kokeshi doll and the camilla which the, that flower is usually associated with death isn't it that's on the doll i want to say and then What's interesting is on the backdrop of their little spinner board, there is a VG, which I'm assuming G means Ginty. So maybe his first name has a V in it. And then there's the hand, which again, the hand sculpture connected to him, the dolls, but also the lotuses, which seems like, oh, it says Viginti, Viginti. Oh, so Ginty, Viginti is his name. Interesting. I will look up what Viginti means because I feel like that's uh, safe to do. Uh, Viginti. I feel like Viginti can be looked up. That that should be fine. Viginti. It means uh, indeclinable. 20. It's a Latin, right? So it says it is Latin for, it says 20. Oh, and the symbol are two X's. Interesting. Well, that goes along with the whole Deckham and Nona and the, that goes along with the whole number, the numerology with their names. Okay. Viginti means 20. Okay. Interesting. All right. I'm for it. But yeah, so then we have the Lotus Blossoms that's tied to kind of Oculus, right? It's tied to Oculus and his hair looks like the Lotus Blossoms. Hmm interesting i feel like maybe he's under uh oculus also we have this cat uh mamine mamine the cat with the with the bum leg and the bobtail i kind of love it i love that he has this cat that he's all best friends with i'm like okay come on now you get on to deck him for having a human assistant but your assistant's a cat that seems rather anti-human sir <laughs> and he makes them use her name he's like mamine what does mamine mean i want to see Mameen. Mameen. I just want to know the name meaning. Mameen. Name. Meaning. Uh, it means remember in Latin. Oh. Oh. Because in Death Parade, their whole thing is they have to remember their death. So Mameen means remember. Oh, that's cute. I like that. I kind of I kind of like that name for a cat, actually. Mameen. That's, I like it a lot. And then their explanation of Twister is pretty spot on. And those are the rules. And so I like that Ginty's like, your name doesn't make a difference. Nothing you say makes a difference. Blah, blah, blah. Let's get this over with. He just has no, no desire to keep up pretenses surrounding the game. And I'm like, oh my gosh. So yeah. But then we have, I, I do like that you can see now watching the thing. I was wondering how she got that bear to be in her hair, but it's literally a ponytail with bears sticking out of it. That is the most extra ridiculous thing. Now, from the get-go, Mayu, Mayu seems kind of shallow and ditzy at first. What I like is that as the game goes on, the assumptions we have of these characters from the beginning kind of get challenged and expanded upon. So like... At the beginning, Mayu seems really ditzy and shallow, but the more we get to know her, the more it's like, nah, she's just this teenage girl who, you know, really liked this band and used their music to help her get through, like, really hard times. So that's, that's really cute. I like that. And then when we start out with him, Harada, you know, she gets, like, the, she gets the alluring underwear to try to appease to him, and he's like, oh, she's not that cute. Like, he's, he's a womanizer at first and very, like, kind of vain as well. 
And then he still is kind of vain at the end because when she like has the pretty kimono on and like actually does her hair up different without the bear. I love that she ties the bear with the bow in the back of her kimono though. That was absolutely adorable. The moment she comes back out looking like, you know, not as like a teenage girl, but all dressed up. He's like, oh wow, you're really pretty. And I'm like, girl, it's like she, I'm like, dude, it's like she's all that. She's been pretty this whole time. <laughs> like, what are you doing? Like, she's been nice from the start, right? So <laughs> I have like a dog at my foot wanting me to scratch their belly the whole time. But yeah, so I like that Harada, Harada and Mayu's characters, they don't necessarily change over the course of the episode, but we get more revealed about their characters and find out that they're actually not bad people. They just have human qualities like anybody else. But Ginty does not seem to like humanity. Ginty, which I'm like, Ginty, you're pretty, you act pretty human yourself. You know, you get frustrated and grumbly. And, you know, Deckham comes across as not being human because he's so robotic sometimes in his expressions and his, you know, reasoning. But Ginty comes across very human. So the fact that he doesn't like humans, I'm like, but they're like you. So come on, come on. And then as far as the deaths go in this, everything is pretty straightforward. Like he wants to get out and see Lisa and stay with her. And she like the moment that we see her eyes, the moment we see any anime character with their eyes like looking off screen, I'm like, well, you're evil. <laughs> so that's pretty, it's pretty like pretty self-explanatory that she's probably the cause of death right off the bat. It's just how did she cause the death? And man, blowing him up. Like what the heck? So yeah, and, and any game of Twister, I feel there's a lot of fan service in this episode where they put obviously the characters into various poses. This is probably the most fan service-y episode because there's like a panty shot with Mayu. He's like naked at one point, his clothes disappear. And because of ice, because that's how it works. Like her clothes didn't disappear, but his did, whatever. <laughs> And like she, they're both in like compromising positions the entire time. It's like, okay, sure. Um, but I feel like this is the most fan service of the episode so far, which it's a pretty straightforward episode. There's not a whole lot of depth to it. So do what you got to do, Death Parade. Um, I do like though that we see Ginty reading the, the book and it says CHA's dance Prince Rada is a lady killer legend. The number of women he's bedded is unknown. Like it just sees him like walking with several different women, like all across the magazine, right? And I wondered if maybe Ginty got his information about the two individuals from like a book. That would be kind of cool. Instead of the memories getting transported to his eyes, he got them through a book and was reading them. That would be a kind of cool twist, but I think this was just something extra that he's trolling them with as we go. But yeah, it, it's, it's just interesting. And of course, you know, Mayu gets every fangirl's dream of being in like compromising positions on the twister board with her idol crush. Like, she's just having the time of her life until until the game gets deadly, right? Until she wants to take a break and he's like, fine, we're going to speed things along. And so he has the little shell wand as well, but, and it just makes things worse. And whereas Deckham only seems to be using it very robotically, being like, we need to hurry the game along, Ginty seems to be using it like, oh no, we're, I'm going to have fun with this. And Ginty's kind of scary in that regard because Ginty, he's manipulating the game for fun, it seems, and to, for his own enjoyment. And he asks them to like make him, you know, make this worth his while. Whereas Deckham just wants to get the judgment done as fairly as possible, right? So it's so interesting. And then them both questioning like, this is creepy, what's going on? And yeah, Ginty with that face. I'm gonna get a shot of the Ginty there. It's a good shot of Ginty. I uh, if Hasoya is voicing him, it is very fitting. He feels like a Hasoya character. And then yeah, the game just gets. I'm glad that the real game of Twister is not like this because especially the animation though. The animation in this episode was wonderful. Like the animation of the of the wind like blowing through her teeth and making her look like ridiculous like that's so spot on i was all about it i was like the animation was so good in this episode it's been good all series like the, this animation did not have to go as hard as it did but it did and i'm all here for it i was really glad 
that as ridiculous as, as Harada busting out of the ice and ruining his clothes is, I was glad that they went that route. I was afraid it was going to be something like Saul where he like takes his foot off the twister board and it like takes part of the foot off with it. I thought it was going to be gory, but it did not go the gory route, which I'm very grateful for. We did not need that. And then, yeah, she, like he, we have the, the theme here of how he treats his fans versus how she feels about him. And then Ginty, Ginty says this is his favorite part. His favorite part is seeing how people, his favorite part isn't seeing them die through going into the pit. His favorite part is seeing the, the truth about their characters being revealed in this moment and what you do with that. So, I don't know, y'all. And then him saying, now entertain me for all your worth, humans. I'm like, okay. So there is, with the arbiters, who seem to me like angels in this limbo, there is like a, an aspect that the arbiters, at least in Ginty's case, Ginty feels like he's, <laughs> Ginty feels he is superior to the humans. That as an arbiter, he's superior because he holds their fates in his hand. Again, I have so many questions about the arbiters, where they come from, how this works. If if there is not a god there, then what ends up happening? What what's the deal? But we have not been graced with the answers to those questions yet. And my dog is asking me to throw this. <laughs> but yeah. So I I want to know so badly. I'm curious in the OVA if we're gonna find anything else out about it. But yeah, and then he does, and then Harada considers, he considers kicking her off. And I like that this whole time, like Harada's having this existential crisis of, okay, do I kick her off and save myself? What do I do? And all Mayu is thinking about is, I don't want to pee in front of Harada and wet my pants. I was like, really? Like that, at that point, I was like, girl, she's not going to, she's not going to go into the void. I am glad though that Ginty, even though Ginty says that he made this a sudden death thing. They didn't really die. It just, it the, the spikes became something inflatable at the end. I'm like, oh, okay. So even though Ginty, that explains a lot about Ginty's character, that even though he comes across as being this kind of like badass, stone cold, I don't care about humans, whatever, he there's still a heart there because he doesn't let them like get impaled by spikes. He just did it so that they could figure out who was going to be reincarnated and who was going to go into the void if that was the case. So I'm like, okay. And so, and Harada can't do it. And she just admits how happy she was knowing him and how happy her so his songs made her. And then she ends up falling and he ends up saving her or tries to save her, right? He tries to save her and then they both, or she ends up falling and he barely like, clings on to save himself yep and then it, it shows him like crying he was reading the fan mail saying he'd forgotten about how you know much his fans respected him and how important that was and then he's like i'll put on a concert for you it's very sweet and then she ends up falling anyway you know and i love that once she falls she's like she pees herself and he's like you're dead it doesn't matter and she's like i want to change your clothes <laughs> to be fair i'd probably be the same way i'd be like i don't care if i'm dead or not I need a change of clothes. This is ridiculous. This is just ridiculous. Mm -hmm. But it is a really touching scene, him trying to save her and then ended up letting go. I love the Titanic reference. That was hilarious. Like, this episode was really funny, but it was a nice balance to kind of the creepiness that Ginty provides. Like, it's creepy without being what you would stereotypically think as creepy. Like, he's just really... It's almost scary, which Ginty is not the one I really worry about. I feel like Nona and Oculus are the scariest ones. I feel like they're their versions of the games because Nona's to showed to be like, she's she's quite frightful, right? But yeah, I like the little touches that the animation does. Like they show the little bear clip on the shower, you know, right before she dies. And like they show her mascara running, like and getting her eyes like raccoon eyes. It's really, really, it's good. I like it. And then, yeah, Harada, Harada realizing what happened. And the woman said, this is for Kana and killing him. Mm -hmm. I like the Ginty as he's like, yeah, you guys are dead. As he's holding Mameen there in his arms. With the cat, it's so cute. I, I, did he get the cat as a kitten? Did he like rescue the cat? What's the deal? 
And then I just love that Mayu's like, I want to take a shower. You got one here? <laughs> like in the afterlife? In this limbo? I love that Ginty's like, I don't know how to take this. It is really cute. Like, Mameen is like, Mameen is like sitting in his arms, like, like sleeping while he's talking to Harada. And Harada's playing with the dolls. I'm like, Ginty, if you don't want people playing with the dolls that are on your bar, then why on earth do you have them just sitting out where anybody can get them? And then I like that when Mayu comes back out, she looks all pretty and everything. Like, like she's looked the entire time. It's like, she's all that. <laughs> and Harada's like, wait, what? He's like, I didn't recognize you. I love that we have this, like, budding romance in the afterlife, in this bar. Like, what the heck? And Genti's just like, Genti just looks so frustrated, like, I wish you guys would just go. You guys can't have nice things here. I <laughs> just... It's great. And then we have the little end credits where they do the concert. I love that the black haired girl and Clavis and Deckham have been invited to watch. Ginty looks like he'd rather be anywhere else. Clavis looks like he's ready to join the idol group. And Deckham and the black haired woman are just like, yay, we get a free show. Where they found CHA glow sticks and fans, I don't know. But it's just, I, I guess in limbo, you can just create anything. They're already dead. So why not? And Ginty's like, I hate this. <laughs> but they do the cross heart attack and they put their heart, their hands together to make the heart. So that makes me feel like when they do the cross heart attack, the end, when they do that little thing saying it's their debut single, that makes me think that they're both going to get reincarnated, that neither of them are going to the void, that they're both getting reincarnated together. And maybe in the future life they can meet up again. That's my head canon. That's what I would like to think. The fact that they don't show us what ends up happening. I, I'm i fully convinced that both Mayu and Harada get reincarnated and maybe they'll see each other in a future life. That would be awesome. I just, that's how I feel. But they don't show us, so it's up to the audience's interpretation. But I really liked this episode. This episode was a lot of fun. I like Ginty as a character. He's great. He's such a big tsundere and he doesn't want to admit he has feelings. And I'm all about those types of characters, especially when you know they have feelings, but they're being all, you know, stubborn about it. Those kind of characters I love. So I'm like, Ginty, I'm already a fan of him and Mean, the cat. And I want to see more of them. I'm hoping since we've seen Deckham and him interact and go between both of their bars, that we'll see them both interact more in the future. And then Ginty clearly doesn't like the black haired girl. So I'm assuming that that's going to play a role in this as we go. I'm very curious, but I really enjoyed this episode. It was a lot of fun. It was a nice self-contained episode. We met Ginty in the last episode. So this was a nice continuation of that. Um, and I want to see more of him. So hopefully we're halfway through the series. This felt like a good stopping point to go watch Death Billiards. I can see why they asked it to be after episode six because we've had Ginty's introduction, seeing how he plays the games with the contestants in the afterlife. And now this feels like a nice little midway intermission stop point to go watch the OVA and then come back to watch the second half of the series. So many questions still about the Arbiters, about the world, everything, but I want to go watch Death Billiards before we come back to it. So with that being said, next week we'll watch Death Billiards, the OVA. I'm excited. I want to see what this all entails. I've heard, I've only heard it's like a prequel and that's pretty much it. So we'll, we'll see what it is, it, like a pilot prequel, something like that. We shall see. So next week will be Death Billiards. And then the following week, we'll pick back up with episode seven. So I'm curious to know your thoughts and comments down below. Please, no spoilers, hints, or clues. But I'm excited to hear what you all thought of Ginty, Mimin, uh, Harada, and Mayu and this episode. Ridiculous. So in the meantime, I hope you all have a wonderful week. Please stay safe. Take care. And yeah. I'll be back next week with Death Parade, the Death Billiards OVA. Bye!